Howdy folks. Widget Wallace from NeatCoffee.com here in a very echoey, empty garage because we shut this place down tonight. Uh, we're here again for another Way Home review. Here's how it works. Uh, hi. I've just left the cinema. That's that back that over there. And uh, I've seen a film. I'm going to tell you about it on my way home because that's just what we do. It saves time that way. And this evening we're here to talk about John Carter. Nothing else, not of Mars, not a princess of Mars, John Carter. There you go. All right, so, um, yes. So, synopsis is this. We have John Carter, a, uh, <clears throat> shall we say, uh, kind of eccentric, kind of irascible, recalcitrant individual uh, who, uh, basically sends for his relative, some chap by the name of Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, and asks him to come at once, and by the time Edgar gets there, uh, he is demised, not Edgar, but John Carter. And basically as part of what Carter has left for Edgar is a journal that's supposed to explain everything. And in the journal it tells about how he went off looking for gold and wound up finding himself on the planet Mars. And adventures and hijinks ensued involving, and I'm just pulling things out of the trailer, white apes and large spindly things with multiple arms and weird solar-powered flyers and um, people with, with awesome tattoos. That's pretty much it. A high adventure uh, based on Princess of Mars and the John Carter characters, of course, predates a hell of a lot of the other adventure type characters that you've seen. So it's kind of like uh, filming John Carter, I guess, could be compared to, you know, the people who say that nobody should film Neuromancer because everything's been borrowed from Neuromancer to hell and back. And same thing with John Carter to a great degree. So I, that's mostly a synopsis, because that's really all you need to know. Um, so, okay, so here's the thing. This is, uh, <clears throat> in essence, a live-action Pixar film done under the Disney banner, because Pixar doesn't, Pixar doesn't do live-action. That's how I understand it. Uh, the live-action debut of Andrew Stanton, uh, Pixar director extraordinaire, and, as I understand it, huge Burroughs fan. Now, that's Edgar Rice, not William S., although, for all I know, he likes them both. Um, so, uh, basically here's the deal. You've got this crazed kind of sci-fi party going on where you've got warring factions of humanoid people and the darks who are the green spindly multiple armed creatures and you've got uh, the Mark Strong character who you're going, oh god, you're not Sinestro in this film too, aren't you? And, no, he's not. Uh, that's not a spoiler, by the way, that's just common sense. But, uh, so you've got all these things going on, and you've got some awesome concepts. Like, you know, a, a, a predatory city that moves. I mean, it's in the opening shot, I'm not giving anything away. Um, and just the, uh, the concept of who the bad guys are which is, I don't even want to spoil at all, but just, that's awesome. You've got some great artistic design work that's going on. That's awesome. You got some kick-ass costumes. You got a couple of really huge, awesome action sequences. Awesome. Uh, and you got a cast <clears throat> that um, really holds their own against all this insanity going on around them. Um, so you've got a lot of really good things. Here's my problem, and I admit freely that it may just be my problem. My producer and camera person, Cosette, followed the film completely well and had no problem whatsoever, and in fact uh, was speaking fluent Barsoomian on the way out of the theater. Me, I was confused from jump. It wasn't clear to me who the good guys were, or who the bad guys were. Suddenly you had, it looked like three factions. I'm like, well, is, is Mark Strong the bad guy or is Dominic West the bad guy? I don't know. At one point, 
we're gonna go down a river. No, we can't go down the river. Going down the river means death. Next scene, we're going down the river. Wait, wait, that meant death 30 seconds ago. What the hell just happened? Time seems to dilate depending on what needs to happen. Um, and the cast, although amazing, have to deal with some real clunkers or lines. Um, so, but for the most part, I felt like there was this awesome party going on that I just didn't have an invitation to. And I have to say, and again, maybe it's just me, but it seems that if you'd read the books, this would have been awesome. But I haven't read the books, and it almost feels to me the same way that, the same problem that I had with, like, say, you know, the starting with the middle Harry Potter films, where they went, we're never going to be able to fit all this in, everyone's already read this, we can just skip this part. So the explanations of, like, who the characters were, and, you know, the fact that two people share the same name, oh no, it's not the same name, it's a title, I mean, things like that that just kept me going, wait, what? What's happening? I felt like if I had read the book, I would have been totally on board with everything that was happening. <clears throat> now, that being said, I bet the book is awesome. I've never read the book, I've never read the John Carter series, but if it is, if they really pulled all this stuff out of the books and didn't, like, you know, em embellish it to the extent where it's unrecognizable, I can't wait to read these freaking books. I will say that for the film, so maybe in that way, it's a success. But I spent way too much of the film going, what's happening? Um, I really felt like that. Now, I, I know that, there, you know, maybe, and I have said, maybe it's just me, but I just felt like there was too much going on without any explanation. And what's really frustrating for me is that normally, what you do, from a writing perspective, when you are thrusting the audience into a situation in which they don't know squat about what's going on, right? It's fine for that to be the case, right? That they don't know, because, because you, I mean, that, that's fine. We're used to that. We're not, we, the audience, we're not stupid people. We can pick up on what's going on. But the way that you do that is the character that's in the film that also doesn't know what's going on, they're your conduit for information. So that as they're learning things, you're learning things. But there were sequences where I'm like, well, Carter figured this out. How, how do I know what's going on? I, I don't know what's happening. There's a sequence in which, you know, some ships are firing on some other ships. It wasn't even well established in my mind who was firing on whom. At first I thought, because they all look alike, except for flags that I guess you're supposed to see, on, even on a big screen, I couldn't see them. Um, I couldn't tell who was firing on whom, what was happening, uh, but Carter apparently knew, but I wasn't keeping up with Carter. And maybe that's just me. But it's really frustrating that you, they didn't, to me, take advantage of that conduit, that character, that as he's brought up to speed, we're brought up to speed at the same time. Or again, maybe just me. And I don't think that was by design, because it was, you know, if, if you'd really wanted to play that game of, well, nobody knows what's going on until John Carter figures it out, we would have had no subtitles for the Tharks until he had drunk the waters of the horn of the thing, or whatever it was. Um, the margarita that they fed him, I have no idea. Uh, which I was sort of surprised, I was like, we're getting subtitles, and yet Carter has no idea what's going on but we could sort of figure out what's going on. I felt like I really wanted to be at the same level of ignorance as Carter, but again, he quickly surpassed me, so what do I know? Um, so, and what I really felt like was, is that, as I said, I understand that Andrew Stanton is a big fan of the books. It almost felt like to me that he forgot what it was like to come into that world for the first time and as a result, I got left behind. And again, maybe it's just me. Maybe I just didn't get the invitation. My invitation got lost in the mail, apparently. Um, now, eventually I found out what was going on. Over an hour into it, I pretty much at that point figured out, okay, I know who you people are, I know who you people are, I know who you glowing people are, I know who the green people are. I think I got everybody down. But it's not, 
it's not it's not a simple thing. It's 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 fairly complicated, and and it, I'm not asking for it to be simple. I just wish they had drawn me a bit more of a map as to what was going on, because I got lost. Um, and that's and that to me that was really frustrating because there are some amazing concepts in there. Like I said, great cast, great effects, all these things going on. And in fact, you'd have this amazing sequence of a battle sequence with like John Carter taking on an army, kicking some ass, just really moving with, with Michael, and I'm gonna screw up his last name, Giacano, Giacchino, I can't say names, you know this, um, with an incredible score. And like Taylor Kitsch, swords and things, and I was just like, wow, this is really cool. And I would feel myself engaged, and then something else would happen. I would be like, oh, man, I'm, I feel like I've lost a foothold again. So I'm a bit disappointed. Now, I will say also for this, <clears throat> I will give the, uh, Disney this. At least they have good 3D. I felt like the 3D in this was worthwhile. Uh, I would say it's not critical to the enjoyment of the film. I would say you could go see it in 2D and not, com you know, be missing everything. But I was sort of glad that I saw it in 3D because it's it's really quite gorgeous. Um, but yeah, some things just did not make sense to me that I felt like they were using shorthand for that I just got lost on. And that that's really my main criticism of the film. Um, I mean, as a result of that, my uh, cup wise I say two and a half out of five it managed to veering left and right and left and right kind of like John Carter piloting a I don't know I kept wanting to call them ornithopters because that's what they looked like but I don't think that's what they were it was kind of like kind of like a solar powered you remember those big wheels that you had that you would use you basically like leaned back they were called green machines and you worked them like this it was kind of like that but on Mars and with solar panels and it looked sort of like an insect but in reverse it was kind of like that I don't even know what those were called I, I'm sure they had a name flyers maybe that's all they were um, but anyway so it, it veered around like that uh, and and seemed to crash a lot of times and threw me off just like John Carter um, so it wound up going straight down the middle with a two and a half out of five. Uh, I would say, should you see it? Part of me wants you to see it just so it can, you know, the Lorax won't take number one at the box office again. Uh, but I would say we, we err on the side of your pocketbook more than anything else. Uh, if this is your bag, if you love, if, you, if you're into Burroughs, I would love to know what you thought of the film because I can't come at it from that perspective. But I would say worth a matinee if it's your bag if you looked at the trailer and went Meh, then just you know catch it on dvd at some point down the line but uh but no i um it wasn't my party so i couldn't cry if i wanted to cry if i wanted to so there you go uh that's john carter and it just ki it kills me why didn't you just call it john carter mars but anyway that was john carter and um uh, Another Way Home, we're in the bag. And it is very, very late. That was not a short film. So, uh, thank you to everyone who watches these things. I look forward to your letters and comments telling me how wrong I am. Uh, because I know they're going to be coming. And I'm going ahead and telling you, I could possibly be wrong. And I would love to hear that maybe I am the one of five people on the planet who didn't follow the film. Uh, that's probably the case. I've been in the minority several times before. I'm cool with it. So anyway, uh, I've got, but regardless, if you can see the film and enjoy it, I want you to enjoy it. Cosette enjoyed the film better than I did. I'm happy. I wish I could enjoy it at her level of enjoyment. I never want anybody to go see a film and not enjoy it, um, no matter what it is. I suppose there are limits at some point, but I, we won't go into that here. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, as always, uh, please come and check us out on needcoffee.com and uh, come and find us on Facebook as well. If, you don't, uh, if you're not our friend there, um, do be our friend. We don't bite. Needcoffee.com slash Facebook is where you can find us, and we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, until next time, bye. Now, just between you and me, 
I honestly think that Cosette liked the film more because the giant crazy dog in there is pretty much like our dog, except exactly the opposite as far as speed goes. But when that dog yawns, that looks like our dog. I'm sure that's why she liked the film more than I do. Not to imply that I don't love our dog, but I'm just saying. Bye!